Hello, my name is Andy Binker Kozen from 21stocks.com, top economic analysis from around the globe, and I'm here today with Dr. Graciela Cicilicki, the world famous author of the carbon market in the Kyoto Protocol, the creator of the concepts of basic needs and sustainable development, a lead author in the Nobel Prize winning Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and a special advisor to the UN, the US Congress, and various heads of states. And, well, I could read the list, the list on and on, but I'd be here all day. So, without further ado, here's Graciela Cicilnicki. Uh, thank you very much for, for this honor, Dr. Cicilnicki. Uh, being that you are the creator of the carbon market, could you give us a quick introduction for those people out there that don't know really what it is, how it works? Sure. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for your question. It's an excellent question, a great opportunity to explain this important concept. The carbon market is now international law. It was ratified by 195 nations in 2005. How does it work? It works by setting limits, nation by nation, on carbon emissions. The nations that have those limits by law are the industrial nations, the OECD nations, which emit over 60% of the carbon emissions in the world, even though they only house 20% of the world population. Once you set those limits, as they are set in the Kyoto Protocol for the first time, in human history, the carbon market allows those nations that go above the limit to purchase the right to emit from those nations who are below the limit. So the global limit remains always the same, but the over-emitters pay the under-emitters. So this creates an incentive to reduce emissions, because now, for the first time in history, those who emit too much have to pay, and those who under emit receive payment. So it's profitable to be cleaned. For the first time in human history, it is profitable to clean the atmosphere through the carbon market. That's how it works. Do you think um, that the carbon market will be heavily affected by the, the expiration of the, of the Kyoto Protocol next year, supposing that there is no new, new treaty ratified? Yes, the Kyoto Protocol does not expire. It is international law and will continue. But you are right that there is a table at the end of the protocol that gives the emission limits to the various, various nations, and that table is only valid until 2012. In Cancun, there were agreements to postpone that 2012 date, and I suspect that it will be postponed. But yes, if there is no limit on emissions, the carbon market cannot operate. That is why the carbon market is so important because it's not just a market. It's not just a matter of trading. It's not just a matter of pain. It starts, it requires firm carbon limits from the industrial nations. That's why it's so important. So, of course, we need those limits to continue. Um, the European Union has set a new goal uh, for 2050 that they should reduce uh, carbon emissions by half, by the, uh, by, sorry, not by half, by 80% against 1990 levels uh, by that year, by 2050. And the coalition of, of gas companies, mainly Gazprom, Centrica, and Qatar Petroleum, told uh, the European Union that if they invested less in wind farms and more in gas plants, that they could still meet the goal but save up to 900 billion euro. What's your opinion on this subject? Natural gas is better than 
petroleum and coal because if you burn it, it produces significantly fewer emissions. In some cases, it can go down by two-thirds. But generally speaking, the problem remains. And natural gas shares with petroleum the fact that it is a fossil fuel and it is in limited supply, therefore it's not sustainable. At some point, we have to move to sustainable resources. And the a solution that is being proposed as a temporary, transitory help could work. But everybody knows, everybody accepts, that in the long run, the only solution is renewable energy. And this includes wind, but more than anything, solar energy concentrated solar power. In fact, 89% of all the electricity power in the world comes from fossil fuels tonight, today. And the International Energy Agency computes the power plant infrastructure in the world is worth approximately $50 trillion. So it's going to take time to change that infrastructure. But in the long run, we have to change it and we have to create sources of power and electricity that are renewable. Because the world needs more energy, particularly the developing nations. And at the same time, over 40% of all the carbon emissions in the world originate in power plants. So we need to resolve the power plant problem. It is a $50 trillion problem in the world economy, but I call it the $50 trillion business opportunity. Because it is an opportunity for innovation, for building clean plants, for transforming the power plant infrastructure, and to create more sources of power development jobs in the developing nations, clean power.